we're going to do a contemplation now. And before we do, I'll explain contemplation uh, for those of you who may not ever have done it or may have forgotten meanwhile how to do it. Contemplation is strictly geared for insight. Whereas meditation can be geared for tranquility or for insight. And as the way we practice the meditation, we are directing ourselves in both directions. The tranquility when we are able to stay with the meditation subject and the insight when we label or when we see the impermanence. But contemplation is only for insight. And I will give you some thoughts to contemplate on. They are universal happenings, but they are geared and meant for your own personal experience. So you look at it in the way how you have experienced it. And contemplation is not the usual kind of thinking. The usual kind of thinking that we do is discursive. It jumps from one subject to the next. It gets connections which lead it astray completely. A contemplation is trying to see one's own experiences in the light of the Dhamma, which means also see one's own experiences in the light of universal truth. So it is seeing the microcosm in the macrocosm. And as we see that, we become, um, or we are able to have a different view of ourselves. And this is the way to spiritual evolution, having a different view. It's called right view. Samaditi. The word ditti means view, but it always means wrong view. It's the way we look at things. And when we get and gain insight, we get right view. We see ourselves in a different context. So this is what contemplation is about. Obviously one uses one's mind for it. There's no other thing we have. To, to do that, but so that it recognizes the experience. In order to start, we'll put the attention on the breath for just a moment. I'd like you to think and consider how often in your daily life you have become aware of your own thinking process and if you have become aware how often you have noticed it to be negative. I'd like you to consider how often when you notice the mind being negative you have tried to substitute with the opposite or whether you justified the 
negative thought. I'd like you to consider how often the mind has been rejecting or negative or bothered or irritated since you've come here to Green Gulch. Have you noticed it? Can you recapitulate how often it happened? And when it happened, did you try to substitute with a positive thought or did you believe the negative one? If you believed the negative thought, did you act on it? Were you aware of the negative thought and acting upon it, or was it just an automatic process triggered by some outer happening? Since you've come here to Green Gulch, have you become aware of your reactions or just taking them for granted and believing them?
in your daily life have you become aware of body actions, movements, intentional and involuntary? Have you tried to become aware of them? If you've tried to become aware of bodily actions, has impermanence of each one of them entered your mind? And since you've come here, have you tried to become aware of the body's actions, intentional and involuntary? Have you noticed when you haven't been aware, haven't paid attention? Can you remember now what you did instead of paying attention to the body's actions? Have you noticed that when you do pay attention to body movement of whatever kind, that no problem can possibly arise? Have you noticed that? Have you noticed yourself being judgmental towards other people? Since coming here. And have you believed that? Or did you smile at yourself?
have you noticed that the mind gives the orders and that the body follows suit sometimes better sometimes worse we had that experience if you haven't had that experience do it right now tell your left foot to move and realize who's in charge and who is the servant Are you aware of the identification you have with your body? And the desire in the mind that the body should be comfortable at all times. Can you be aware of that? And have you noticed that the body can't comply with this desire you noticed the mind reacting to any discomfort in the body or did you take it for granted that it should be so Can you notice that you can only know that on which you put your mind? 
that everything else disappears. And can you translate that into your meditation experience? You only know that on which you put your mind. Have you noticed that when the meditation becomes distracted, that mindfulness is not present? That distraction is the opposing factor to mindfulness. Look at your daily life in terms of ordinary, everyday mindfulness. Try to bring up the occasions. The ordinary, everyday mindfulness is a supporting mental factor for what you do. And then have a look to see whether you have already used spiritual mindfulness in your daily life. Seeing those aspects of yourself which go beyond utility. Recapitulate in your mind those aspects of mindfulness which go beyond everyday consciousness. And see whether you can use them here in this course. See if you can remember what they are and how we can practice them.
can you see why distraction arises? Can you see the me consciousness behind the distraction? people everywhere practice mindfulness for spiritual growth. Is to say a little verse for the food and I'll say each line and like you to repeat it after me and since it says that we don't eat for pleasure we very often get the question not just once but several people putting that in the question box shouldn't it taste good well that's not what is meant so I'm just preempting that question. Huh? It's not meant. It is meant that we understand that we eat to support life in this body and not as another sense pleasure that we look for and then use for that purpose. Obviously it's supposed to taste good it's much easier digested when it tastes good and obviously it's supposed to be healthy but it has to have a purpose other than that and that purpose is in this case just to keep the body in good condition because we can't practice very well when the body is in poor condition that's why the Buddha also emphasized that one should practice while one is still well and as young as possible <laughs> and when one does that one has a better chance if one hasn't been able to do that well one can start at any time obviously but the body does have a great part to play less problems it gives us in the sitting the easier it becomes to uh, meditate and get concentrated. So pleasure just means that we know why we are eating for that particular purpose. Doesn't mean it shouldn't taste good. So please repeat after me. Reflecting carefully, I use this food Not for, pleasure, not for pleasure, not for indulgence, not for indulgence. But, only for this body, but only for maintaining this body so that it endures, so that it endures. For, keeping it for keeping it unharmed, for supporting life, for supporting life. so that former feelings of hunger are destroyed And new, and new feelings from overeating do not arise then there will be for me a lack of bodily obstacles and living comfortably And please put the attention on the breath for just a few moments.
Now look at any particularly heavy dukkha that you've had in your life in the past or now and try to recognize whether it's either wanting something that you don't have or not wanting something that you do have just try to distinguish between these two amongst the heavy dukkha that you may have had in the past or are having now and then having found out which one it is either wanting or not wanting then try to inquire why do I want it or not want it what's my reason And now having found the reason, inquire whether at this particular moment you still find the reason valid. And if you still find it valid, what is that validity based on? Other people's opinion? Your own opinion? A search for support? Was it that validity? Or is it based upon your dislike of unpleasant sensations? Now having ascertained whether it's something you want to have or want to get rid of and also having found the reason why you want either of those can you for just a moment let go of either wanting or not wanting of anything that you may now carry around with you or that happened in the past letting go completely for just a little moment of wanting whatever it is that you haven't got or not wanting whatever it is that you have. And having done that, look at your own feelings. How do you feel? you feel at ease, consoled or bereft because your dukkha disappeared for a moment if you feel the latter can you recognize the fact that you have established an identification with dukkha Or do you think it is worthwhile to establish 
a personal identification with Dukkha. And if you don't think it's worthwhile to establish that relationship, can you see that it's entirely up to you to sever it? Have you found in yourself that little niggling feeling which translate into there must be more to life than what I have already experienced and manifests in unrest, restlessness, disquiet, looking for something? Have you become aware of that dukkha? And if you have, can you find out how you have answered that search? what possibilities you have looked into to satisfy that inner longing. Look at all the different pathways and possibilities that you have used to satisfy that inner longing and possibly recognizing that none of them actually answered that particular search. Can you recognize the fact that this inner longing is a longing for total fulfillment? And if you can, what do you expect or visualize or have an idea what total fulfillment should mean? inquire to see whether total fulfillment could possibly arise out of worldly situations which include people, activities, knowledge, fame, acceptance,
or any of the things that you have looked into can you inquire and find out whether worldly activities, situations, endeavors can still that longing for fulfillment? How would you name that which could still the longing completely and provide complete fulfillment so that no more wishes arise? Can you give it a name or an idea, a description? Now have a look, not at the past, but at the present moment. Let's say, what's been happening today, from the time you woke up until now? Was there any dukkha? Did you recognize it? Did anything happen that you didn't want to happen? Or did something you really wanted to happen, didn't happen? Just between the time you woke up and now. and then inquire why you didn't want it to happen, if that was the case. Was it pride? Was it project? And did it make you see yourself in a lesser light than what you'd like to? Why didn't you want it to happen? And if it was something that you would have liked to happen and didn't, why? Find out why you wanted it to happen. Were you looking for results, achievement? Forgetting to go with the flow.
Now look at any day in your everyday life, any day at all. How often are you joyful and how often are you resisting, rejecting or disgruntled, irritated or hoping for better times. Just take any day that you can remember and look to see what happens during that day. Maybe the day before you came here or one of the days you've been here, it doesn't matter. How often is there joy? How often is there rejection, dislike, disgruntled? And now look at the reasons for either the joy or the rejection. Are they outside triggers that cause them? Do you believe in those triggers? Do you believe that without them things would be entirely different? and have a look to see whether you're using time and energy to avoid any of the triggers that cause the negative reaction. And what are you doing to avoid them? And now have a look to see whether you believe that joy is also caused by outer triggers and do you pursue these outer triggers, trying to keep them and get them back? And how much time and energy do you spend on that? Have a look. Can you recognize the fact that outer triggers come to us through our senses and that our senses are only a small part of ourselves?
and can you recognize that there is an inner reality in each person clear translucent sparkling it's the utmost value which is not and need not be connected to the sense contacts can you either feel it or imagine it become aware of it or at least have an idea that this is so And can you recognize the fact that our inner longing for peace and happiness is connected to this truth of that which we carry within? Can you see the connection and thereby discard the idea that our outer triggers are of the utmost importance. If you can see things in that way, can you also fathom that although dukkha is in small and large matters, we need not suffer from it. our inner reality doesn't get touched. Now find out whether you want to draw near to that inner reality so that eventually it is the most telling and most important aspect of yourself. Look once more at your own dukkha, whether it's present now and you're aware of it, whether it's been present in the past, or whether it's only present as the changeable nature which causes irritation and friction. 
Look at that dukkha now and see it in the perspective that we have just touched upon. Does it look different? May people everywhere be completely free of all dukkha. like to do a a guided contemplation with you now on the four elements. Now I've briefly mentioned them before but I would like to explain them a little more before we start with the contemplation. The first one is the earth element. The earth element has as its characteristic solidity. Everything that's solid is called the earth element. Bones, flesh, all those things are earth element. Teeth, nails, hair, earth itself. It has as its um, function that it carries, it's a foundation it's a support. And then the next one we have is the fire element. Now the fire element characteristic is temperature. Whether it's warm or cold doesn't matter. It's temperature. Any temperature, anywhere. But it also has as its function destruction. And from destruction, new life. If we didn't have the fire element within us, we couldn't digest and the aging process happens through the fire element. It is destructive as fire is, but also it generates new because when destruction has taken place, new life can arise. The water element is characterized by liquidity and I have mentioned before it has the function of binding if you put water into flour you get dough if we didn't have almost 80% of water element within us we consist of almost 80% water element strange isn't it We, we actually would think it's mostly earth element but it isn't. It's mostly water element. If we didn't consist of that much water element, our cells would walk around, each one by itself. If that were the case, I've often thought, then we might be easier, might be easier for us to understand that there is no self. (laughs) But then it occurred to me that even if the cells were all walking around by themselves, we would probably pick the biggest and the nicest looking one and say, that's me. (laughs) But seeing that we have all that water element, they're all bound together. So it has liquidity and binding. And then we have air or wind element. Obviously, that's our breath. 
it's characterized by that but the um, its function is movement so if you look at wind it makes things move and if you look at breath it moves so the function is movement and its character is the air and for us it's the breath so these are the aspects of these four primary elements they're called datus of primary elements and everything that exists contains them so we're going to do a um, contemplation on that which is designed to help us get rid of a little bit of this delusion that we are separate from each other separate from the rest of the world that we are something entirely unique and special and that we have to protect the boundaries which are limited by the body and call itself it should give us a little more of a feeling of togetherness of totality and that's what this particular contemplation is designed for and I would like to say one more word about contemplation now we've done two this is the third one in your individual meditation time do use them the first one was the contemplation on mindfulness probably forgotten by now but never mind just mindfulness am I doing it or not that's enough the second one was on dukkha am I having it or do I know what it means and this one on the elements in order to start please put the attention on the breath for just a moment Now feel the solidity of your body, which is the earth element, where you touch, for instance, with the hands on the knees, where you can feel bones or skin. We can feel lips on top of each other, eyelids on eyes, feet on floor, anything where you feel a solidity of your body. Now let that feeling of solidity flow into the cushion that you sit on, which is also solid let the two earth elements merge then become aware of the earth element in the soles of your feet and of the earth element in the floor or the mat and let your earth element and the earth element of the mat or the floor merge, flow into each other. And now imagine that you're walking outside. You're walking along the floor and on each step that you take, the earth element of the soles of your feet merges with the earth element of the floor that you walk on and having walked as far as the door as you put your hand on the door the earth element of the palm of your hand merges and flows into the earth element of the door that you now open
and now you walk outside and your feet merge with the earth element of the earth that you're stepping on with the earth element the solidity of the grass that you're stepping on they flow into each other you walk over to the nearest tree you put your hand on the bark of the tree and the earth element in your hand merges and flows into the earth element of the bark you don't put a barrier between and you lean your back against the tree so that the earth element of your body joins and merges with the earth element of the tree that you're leaning against you go further becoming aware of the earth element in your feet and in the grass and touch a flower and in that touch contact you let your own earth element flow into the earth element of the flower no separation and you go further always knowing in each step that you're joining the earth with the earth element in your feet and then you touch a lettuce and your touch contact brings the merging of the two earth elements and then you go further and you come to a stream and you put your hand into the stream and the solidity of the water that can carry boats that can have fish swim merges with the solidity of your hand and you actually have some of the water on your hand two earth elements everything that exists has all four elements you can feel the strength of that solidity by holding your hand in the water and having the flowing of the stream push against your hand and you look up at the sky and let your own body earth element flow into the clouds which also have solidity no division no separation merging and now you take step by step knowing the earth element of the feet joining with the earth element of the earth going back inside the house back to your seat and as you sit down become aware of the earth element in your body from top to toe and join that earth element with the person sitting nearest you there's only air between us 
it's easy to join. And let those two earth elements merge. Now you become aware of the temperature in your body. Some parts may be warm, other parts may be cool. Have the awareness of the temperature, the fire element. You can become aware of the temperature and the cushion you sit on. Let the two join. They merge into each other. And do that with your feet on the floor. Become aware of the temperature, the soles of your feet, and the temperature on the floor. And let them become one. If you have your hands held together in your lap, you can become aware of the temperature as it's joined from one hand to the other. In the same way, let the feet join their temperature with the floor they're touching. And now, we walk along the floor, knowing the temperature of the floor, of the feet, merging into each other, to the door where the hand becomes aware of the temperature of the door, and the two join. And as we go outside, we can feel the temperature of the earth itself as it transmits itself to our feet and thereby to our feeling. And the two are not apart because the feet are participating in the temperature of the earth and that generates a feeling within. And now we go into the sunshine. And we can feel the heat, the fire element of the sun as it comes down on our body. And the feeling it generates joins us to the fire element in the sky. Now we go into the shade. And being away from the direct impact of the fire element in the sky, we feel the coolness. The coolness touches our body and generates feeling. So the shade and we ourselves are not separate. Now we go to the nearest tree, we touch it with our hand, we feel the temperature, 
it transmits itself to our feeling and we are no longer separate from the tree. And we lean our back against the tree and all the temperature that is either in the sun or in the shade that exists within the tree transmits to us as feeling all over and we are no longer two. And we walk along the grass in the sunshine and we can easily feel that there's temperature in the grass warm warming the feet manifesting the togetherness the oneness and we come to a little stream and as we put our hand in we immediately recognize the temperature of the water and our hand adjusts itself to that temperature practically immediately so we can easily feel the togetherness, the oneness, the non-separation We walk along the beach on the warm sand and the warmth of the sand transmits itself to our feet. We can immediately feel it and they become one and it goes through our whole body. And now we plunge into the ocean and the temperature of the ocean immediately transmits itself to us and the temperature of our body adjusts and there's no difference anymore between the one and the other And we come back step by step, knowing the temperature on the ground we step on, transmitted to our feet. And we sit down on the pillow and recognize the temperature in our own body from head to toe and become aware of the temperature of the other people around us. And we recognize that nothing separates us except air. So we make that separation smaller. And as we touch another person, we can feel their temperature quite easily. And we can recognize the togetherness, the oneness of this manifestation. put our attention on ourselves on the water element as we experience it in the eyes in the mouth is the rushing or pulsing of the blood as we know it from urine from perspiration from heaviness as we become aware of the water element within us We also know that it's a binding element and we become aware of the binding element in all the material manifestations around us. 
and join with them, merge with them, the pillow, the floor, as we walk step by step to the door, the door itself, all are being held together by the water element. And as we go outside, we can actually feel the wetness of the grass. We know that in the morning it has dew on it. And we imagine we are standing in the rain and it soaks us. no difference between the rain and ourselves they're totally merging into each other we're going to the nearest tree and we might be able to see the sap that rises the life giving water element We might touch a flower or a leaf and recognize that it's filled with liquid. That the bees and the butterflies use for nourishment. And as we touch we know our own water element to join with the water element of the flowers, of the leaves. We go to a stream and as we put our hand in, the hand becomes the water element joined totally with the water element of the stream. We do that at the ocean and the whole body becomes the water element covered with the water, even penetrated by the water of the ocean. And we look up at the sky and we realize that the clouds contain the rain and are therefore full of the water element. And we are almost 80% full of it. So we can actually merge into the cloud. As we come back to our seat, we recognize that water element in everybody else. They couldn't have a body if they didn't have the water element. And with that recognition comes the understanding and the feeling that we belong together. Now we become aware of the wind element. Each breath is wind. It moves and makes movement. It contains the air around us. Everything that we touch contains air in the spaces between each manifestation. There's air in the pillow. As you sit down, you can feel it going out. As you get up, you can feel it coming in. Join your own air element with the air element of the pillow. The air element of the floor because that too has spaces 
and spaces are filled with air and as we go outside we can feel the wind on ourselves and we can become one with it it touches us we can feel it move we also become one with the air around us as we breathe it in and out We go to the tree, see the leaves move as the wind touches them. The wind is touching the leaves and is touching us. No difference. We see the clouds in the sky moving in the wind. Our eyes move with them. If the wind becomes strong, the clouds might move fast and me might actually be blown off our feet. We go to the ocean and we see the wind element in the movement of the waves. We see the wind element in the movement of the grass that we step on and we see the wind element in the sand that we walk on as we leave our footsteps behind, indentations. We are part of earth, fire, water and wind as everything else is around us and as we come back to our seat 